when we talk about injury, we kind of talk about optimizing training and preventing injury in this particular context. And in order to do that, I want to introduce you to a concept straight away. This is called a PARQ or Physical Activity Readiness Questionnaire. And it's something that is recommended for all participants before they take part in, in a new form of fitness training or development. Now, you might be wondering, well, what is this PARQ Readiness Questionnaire thing all about? And I thought, well, what I'd do is I'd actually bring the whole questionnaire in here and I've started it off already. And I'd actually complete it while you guys watch me. It's going to be a bit embarrassing is about my like health stuff but you see here james sims i'm 45 as i record this i'm male didn't put it bother putting date uh date in here are you taking any medication or drugs no i'm not at the moment does your i mean paracetamol here and there i've got a headache but no does your physician ask you to inform them before taking part in exercise no describe physical activity you do at the moment i'm doing gym fitness classes cycling and table tennis a few years ago i would have put football i would have put marathon running for a period of time but i'm not doing those things anymore but let's go through these look yes or no History of heart problems and chest pain. So I'm going to say no. High blood pressure. No, I do actually have slightly low blood pressure. Interesting. Chronic conditions. No. History of heart problems in the family. No. Hernia or any other condition aggravated by lifting weights. No. Recent surgery in the last 12 months. No. I did have a surgery, but it was longer ago than that. Pregnancy. No. History of breathing or lung problems, no. Muscle joint or back disorder, I do suffer a bit of sore Achilles, things like this. Uh, it's affecting me, so I could put that in there. I'll probably put that one in there, and I might sort of express that, explain why. Diabetes or thyroid condition, no. Cigarette smoking, I don't smoke. Obesity, um, I haven't actually measured it, but presumably they would measure this for me, but I'm not obese. And increased blood cholesterol, no. So for my yes one here, I'd be putting in sore heels. And I might put in here Achilles, and I get that kind of pain a little bit, and I might be able to get some advice on that, for example. And then here I put my name in and I sign it. Now that will be a, that will be looked at by sort of a fitness professional or a gym um, um, a gym operator, and they will actually recommend, you know, am I able to train or is it should I go and see a doctor? Or they call it a doctor referral, and that's what a PARQ is. So I just wanted to show you guys uh, what that is. Now the next thing I want to talk to you about is how we'd actually go about preventing injuries, and a couple of sort of details I want to draw out from this. The first thing, and I honestly think it's perhaps the most important as a general picture, is the application of the principles of training. I really would like to draw your attention to reversibility. I really would like to draw your attention uh, to individual needs. I'll just put INs, individual needs. I just want to draw your attention here to progressive overload. If we are, I would want to draw your attention here to fit the appropriate frequency, intensity, time, and type. If we are progressive in increasing our training, if we apply the training to the different individuals we're working with, it, generally speaking, they're less likely to get injured. If we don't sort of achieve reversibility because we effectively kind of overtrain someone, they're less likely to get injured. Adherence to rules is a good one. You know, think about things like foul play. You might also want to think about, you know, about where you play surfaces, you know, whether you're actually on like a proper court or pitch, these sorts of things. And also, you might also want to think that adhering to rules prevents things like aggression, or I might really want to put violence there. Appropriate PPE, I mean, the PPE is a term that people are very comfortable with these days, but of course, we're talking about personal protective equipment. And you might want to be thinking about, uh, <laughs> what have I written? <laughs> Goodness me protective equipment and you might want to be thinking about in your own sport what that would be if i take let's say hockey as my field hockey is my example it could well be uh be padded gloves it could be a gum shield it could even be um it could obviously be something like shin pads uh, uh trainers that are appropriate for an astro surface this is appropriate ppe now we're also talking about appropriate equipment and checking and i really want to draw your attention to the word checking it's not just about having a swanky hockey stick but one that has not been ground down one that does not have cracks in it and those things need to be checked this could also apply to things like you know that the, um, a cricket helmet for example a cricket helmet for example has not suffered a blow and might actually not protect your head that would be a good example uh, and checking facilities you know classic things are surface they are debris they are moisture you know is someone going to slip on a surface uh, we could also talk about like indoor services you might think about proximity 
And the other thing about facilities is things like first aid. Is it actually available in the facility? And obviously, if you go to a leisure center, you can pretty much be confident it is. But these are useful questions to ask oneself. Now, two more points I want to sort of consider here before we move uh, to the end of this tutorial. I want to talk about injuries themselves or types of injuries. And I just want to cover a few base types so you've got a good understanding of them. Okay, so if you just bear with me here, I'm going to take you through a few different types of injuries. I think all will be familiar to you. One that is getting a huge amount of press at the moment and rightly so is concussion i want to be clear about concussion concussion is effectively the rattling of the brain which hits the inside of the cranium okay that's what we mean by con concussion and it can cause dizziness confusions often linked with blackouts and it's very important that if someone experiences a, a concussion or suspected uh, concussion, concussion they must follow the protocol and i think it's particularly important at the moment where um coaches and uh, trainers they're being very cautious to send let's say a footballer a rugby player a hockey player a netballer back onto the court pitch whatever if they have been struck on the head a cricketer is a really good example as well next one i want to talk to you about fracture a fracture we'll often call, talk about as a broken bone we call it a break right but remember that these can be both sudden you know sort of like you know a hard impact in an american football match say or, but or, or they could be gradual and what I mean by that is sort of like a stress fracture. Someone who's doing a huge amount of running mile, miles per week might suffer sort of like cr small cracks developing in their tibia and their shin bones. It's quite common. <laughs> let's also um, let's also have a think about dislocation. Dislocation. Lots of examples of dislocation, but I think the one you want to think about perhaps most commonly is a shoulder. Is really really common. By the way, other fractures that might be common here, like uh, collarbones, clavicle breaks, very common in sport. People falling. But think about dislocation in the form of of the shoulder. Say this is where, in this case, the ball of the humerus leaves the socket of the scapula. Okay, so it's displaced, it's dislocated socket of the scapula. And that's a really nice example. Now this will be treated usually with sort of the, the joint being placed back into position, often treated with gas and air because it's quite a painful thing to experience. And if this happens, you're gonna know about it. This is a really unpleasant thing. And can I stress, whether it's a finger, a shoulder, an elbow, this is not something that should be popped back in on the side of a pitch or court. This needs to be seen by a medical professional. There's a horrible history, not the TV show, of, um, of um, let's say football coaches popping shoulders back into position. This is something that is not a good idea and shouldn't be attempted. So there you go, there's my opinion leaking out of me. A sprain, have a think about what you understand by the term sprain, it's an interesting term. We are talking about ligament damage with a sprain and it normally happens through twisting. Okay, think about a sprained ankle. That's the most common one we might want to think about. We over twist the ankle, it causes ligament damage. It could be on the medial or the, the, the inner or the outer side, medial or lateral side, but that's what we mean by a, a sprain. A couple of others, uh, we want to talk about torn cartilage. As you guys know, cartilage is a spongy tissue that covers the ends of bones and sits within joints. Torn cartilage is a problem because it has no blood supply. In other words, it cannot heal by itself. This is why lots of kind of cartilage uh, surgeries take place, especially with sports people, especially with knees. Um, and can I also stress in this, it can be the forerunner to arthritis and what we'd specifically call osteoarthritis because arthritis is effectively the lack of cartilage at a joint to protect the bones and that, you know, there's different forms of it, but that's something that could come afterwards because of cartilage damage. Final one, and then we're going to have a look at the rice principle, is what we call a soft tissue injury. Soft tissue injury. Lots of examples of these, and I'm going to give you a couple of, you could be talking about tennis elbow. That's tennis, believe it or not. Tennis elbow, which is a form of tendonitis, hurts the outside of the elbow. You could be talking about golfer's elbow. Golfer's elbow. Another form of tendonitis, which affects the inside of the elbow. We could be talking about abrasions. Uh, abrasions are, are effectively cuts and of course that can happen if we fall think about a cyclist falling from their bike for example now let's finish this off we are going to talk about the rice principle now the rice principle is often what we will use particularly for what we call sprains but also strains now i didn't use the word strains above but that's a kind of soft tissue it's a muscle damage for want of a better word and this is what we tend to do we will first of all rest 
the injured part, you know, so obviously we don't want it to be be moving or putting pressure on it. We would get ice onto it as rapidly as possible. Ideally, an ice pack, but if it's, you know, a bag of peas, whatever, but it must be surrounded by some kind of cloth, something that prevents the ice touching the skin directly because that can be damaging. We compress that part, so we put pressure on that part and we elevate that, let's say, ankle, if it's going to be ankle, above the level of the heart. And this is to ensure that we don't get blood pooling around that part, which could, can, of course, increase swelling. Because, of course, what your body does when you get an injured uh, part of your body is it, it fires what we call the immuno response. It fires lots of resources and antibody and all kinds of stuff down to the area. And it can sort of like swell up more because we haven't elevated it and it just the, the blood kind of gets retained there. And, of course, by definition, you won't be moving it, so it's not going to get pushed back out. So elevation is actually one of the most important principles here. I hope that's useful. Cheers.